Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's go ahead and finish out uh, the remaining topics for the study guide. Uh, in orange here is going to be uh, the material for chapter 6. Uh, we start off with chemical reactions. Again, everything in a chemical reaction is going to be separated by an arrow. Uh, on the left side of your arrow, you'll have your reactants or your parts that you start with, and then you will yield in the reaction your products or what is being produced. Uh, I want you to know, uh, understand uh, how many uh, elements that you have on each of the sides, your reactant side and your product side. Uh, be able to balance these chemical reactions. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to first correctly make sure that you have your reaction uh, copied down correctly. Uh, write out each one of the components on the left side and the right side and then work your way back and forth uh, within the reaction using coefficients to balance out your reaction. Uh, remember the coefficient will uh, multiply and distribute through an entire uh, molecule, for example, uh, CO2. If you have uh, two uh, parts or uh, uh, two moles, I uh, will talk about moles uh, a little bit later. If you have uh, two pieces, you put a two in front of the CO2, you'll have two carbons, and then your subscript on your O is going to represent two, and that'll multiply by the two to give you four. Uh, there are um, Many examples that we worked out uh, with this last lab with chemical reactions. Um, be familiar with the uh, balancing of the chemical reactions within the lab and also with your homework questions. Uh, the next part is the different types of reactions. Uh, you have combination, decomposition, single replacement, and double replacement. Uh, usually when you have two individual pieces coming together to form one uh, combined compound, or a uh, combined uh, type of product, it'll be a combination reaction. Opposite of a combination reaction is going to be your decomposition. You'll start with one component usually, and then it'll go undergo the reaction and break off into its individual uh, components. Uh, the last two are going to be single replacement and double replacement, and in my mind I usually think of these like dances. Uh, so if you have two people dancing together, and then one person cuts into that dance, and then you'll have one person that uh, is going to be uh, left out, and then the two new people will be dancing. That'll be like a single replacement. And a double replace replacement will be where you have like two couples dancing, and then they're uh, doing a, a dance together, and then they will uh, swap partners, and kind of like a do -si do uh, where you'll have a double uh, replacement. The next topic is going to be your uh, types of reactions uh, like your oxidation uh, reduction. Uh, do know uh, the dip, how, uh, when a reaction, when the component is being oxidized or reduced. Uh, be able to identify them uh, together within the same reaction where you'll have one uh, part being oxidized, the other part being reduced. An easy way to remember this is the memory device or mnemonic uh, called oil rig. Uh, oil rig, write this out on your uh, exam when you're on oxidation and reduction type questions. Uh, this stands for oxidation is loss, uh, reduction is gain. Uh, this is going to be oxidation is a loss of electrons, reduction is a gain of electrons. Uh, one important thing to remember uh, that is easily confused is that uh, do know that electrons um, are negative. So if you're gaining electrons, you're going to be gaining something that has a negative charge on it. When something is losing electrons, if you're losing electrons, you're taking away that negative part and it's going to compensate and usually become more positive. So when you're gaining electrons, it'll become more negative. When you're losing electrons, it'll become more uh, positive. That's uh, usually confused because when we think of gaining something, we think of it being additive. Uh, gaining something is in adding together and being positive. So uh, do remember that trend. Uh, the next part is going to deal with moles. And no, these aren't the little guys that are uh, uh, digging holes underground. Um, a mole is um, one mole of an element uh, can be defined as a really large number. Uh, this is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Uh, this is going to be a conversion uh, that you can use. 
uh, just like a dozen. And my uh, dog is making a cameo appearance. Uh, she heard me talk about the moles underground, and I think she wants to capture one of those. So, um, anyways, um, a dozen eggs would be 12 eggs. Um, or like a baker's dozen is going to be 13. Uh, one mole is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You can have a mole of apples, you can have a mole of uh, people, and that would be a really lot of people, um, but it, you're usually going to be dealing with a mole of atoms, a mole of uh, compounds, a mole of molecules. And remember, you're just like a dozen is 12, um, just like there's 12 inches in, in one foot, uh, three feet in a yard, uh, then one mole of anything is going to be uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of whatever that uh, is. Um, your molar mass is going to be uh, grams divided by moles. This is going to be per one mole. Uh, every element in the periodic table has a unique mass. Uh, they're written in the periodic table uh, per one mole. For example, carbon is about 12 grams per one mole. Hydrogen is about one gram per one mole. Oxygen is about 16 grams per one mole. This is going to be the number that's listed on the bottom in the periodic table. If you're given a formula, uh, something like uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, um, C6H12O6, uh, um, or uh, some uh, very large, uh, anything CH3, CH2OH as uh, ethanol, uh, you'll be able to uh, look at each individual atom, write those down, multiply uh, through by the coefficients within the formula, and you can figure out a molar mass of something like carbon dioxide. Uh, we can work out carbon dioxide right now without even writing it down. Uh, carbon dioxide has one carbon and two oxygens. A carbon is 12. Uh, two oxygens uh, will be 16 and 16, so that would be 32. So then if you're adding uh, 32 uh, to 12, you're going to get 44. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. Another uh, simple example would be water. Water is H2O. Uh, one oxygen is 16. Hydrogens are one each. There's two hydrogens and one oxygen for a total of 18 grams per mole. Uh, there's going to be numerous calculations within this chapter. I find that there's a really nice flowchart that's on page 234, figure 6.9, uh, telling you how to get between moles. Anytime you're going moles to moles, uh, you're going to be using uh, the coefficients or the subscripts uh, within a chemical reaction or within a molecule. Uh, anytime you're going between moles and grams, uh, you want to use your molar mass. If you're going from atoms to elements, you want to use Avogadro's number. Uh, take a look at that table. It sums it up very nicely of what you will use to take one, uh, one component to another type of component using usually just a one uh, multiplication or division step. Uh, lastly, uh, also do know uh, limiting reactant, limiting reagents, these are going to be uh, the parts that are to be used up first, uh, there's a nice example talking about making sandwiches. If you have all of the ingredients and whichever one is going to be in the lowest amount, you'll use that one up first. Um, this can be used and thought of and when you're cooking something and you're looking through your cupboards and you have only a certain amount of one spice, uh, you may have to modify your um, recipe to be able to cook that. Uh, entree of whatever it is, um, because based on that, spice is your limiting reactant. That's what you have the least of, or that uh, you know amount of uh, uh, whatever you know, chicken or, or turkey or something, or uh, that you're uh, cooking. You uh, will have to look at that um, as well. Um, so we're getting no, we'll trail off into cooking. The last thing is going to be uh, percent yield calculations. Uh, be familiar with how to calculate a percent yield. Um, and last thing I won't cover um, for the exam will be uh, chapter uh, 6, uh, section 9 will not be on the exam. So this ends at 6.8. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video now if you need to. Uh, write down uh, some of these topics. 
uh, please email me or uh, text or call me. Let me know if you uh, have any questions or need any additional help before the exam. Um, if you need any study sessions, uh, there are uh, some study sessions going on uh, if you need any extra help. Uh, before the exam, please uh, use the discussion board uh, to uh, post up some questions you may have that your peers or I can answer. Or just send me a quick email or uh, give me a call and let me know if you have questions. Uh, with that said, uh, that's everything for the exam. Uh, good luck with your study and I will see you all this weekend.